Hi, this is James from Fatbox Games, and today I completed work on the track layout concept sheet for my current iPhone game project. And for documentation's sake, basically, I just wanted to create a small little demo video of the method and procedure that I do basically when it comes to concepting or illustrating something out um, like this. So usually where I start with something like this is I go into Adobe Illustrator. Inside of Adobe Illustrator when I'm doing track layouts I usually like to make sure I have view, show grid turned on and I use the grid kind of as an accuracy uh, reference point. I also turn on view, snap to grid just to make sure any points that I draw will snap to these grid pieces. Um, I can kind of demonstrate that. Usually when I'm doing this too, I'll turn the fill off mm -hmm, like that, bring the stroke forward and um, could be red, whatever, any color. I just start clicking and bump the stroke width up to, I think on this one I had a stroke width of about 20. And um, the grid snapping and the grid being there allows me to basically snap to that point and hold down shift and kind of get a perfect you know arc for a turn um, and it allows me to basically uh, reproduce that you know on both sides and to make sure my endpoints and start points are in the same area that was a really rough example um, so right here I had both of my objects. Um, how I created this was, is I drew the basic stroke, 23 point wide stroke um, of the basic track asphalt. I hit control C, control V, I made a duplicate of it, and made this stroke white. And I bumped down this stroke width, pretty small, to like a two or three. I marquee, drag, select both objects, and then horizontally, and vertically align both of them. And so now I have sort of a center line in the middle. I'm going to marquee drag select both of them and hit control C. Go back over to Photoshop. I'm going to actually hide most of these. I'm going to hit control V. I'm going to paste it as a smart object so it stays as a vector object. I just kind of pull it up here and say that this is my track layout A. Um, so I have the title for this track up here, just text tool little text thing and then I need to name this and I always make sure that I name it to basically in the layer panel to match the track layout both are 1A so I know these are 1A I also like to shift select both of them right mouse button and link layers and you see these little chains appear next to them so that when you select the either one of them they follow each other together and that was basically the method that I took today to trying to go back into the history. And we'll go back and we'll take another look here at what I actually did. These are kind of all out of whack over here. And basically, I put a little drop shadow on them and a little bit of a black stroke around the edges just to, to kind of pretty it up. Um, I designed these tracks basically when I was an illustrator, kind of sketched them out um, with a pencil beforehand. Um, I took a picture of it with my camera phone and basically traced in Photoshop over my pencil drawings. Just kind of made the first tracks a little easier with these big, you know, wide turns and just kind of a boxy square shape and started to add a little bit more complexity as I went to basically match the progression of the game's difficulty. And um, A, B, C, D, E, F was basically F being the most difficult, A being the easiest, and added more turns. Um, after I did this concept, I did realize that I think this E is actually the hardest track on here by looking at it. So I will kind of will probably want to swap E and F out later on and make this the final track because this one looks a little easier to drive than the others. And um, so my naming conventions, I use letters. I also put the one before the letter, and that was basically to ensure that I knew this was the first version of E-Track, you know, 1E, um, because what I'll do later is using code, I'll flip around the direction that the AI go and the starting gate, and you'll actually drive the track in a reverse 
So where that one would be would be like an R for this is the E track, but it's in reverse now. So this would be track layout R E, and that way I would know that that was the reverse ver the reverse version of that. And the you know the principle behind it for me was is, is I make a rever reverse version for all six tracks, and I have the forward version of it, the first version. Um, I end up doubling my tracks, um, so I end up having 12 in my game. And it also kind of saves me um, a lot of time and work on the art production side to just, you know, doing the track once and then using scripts to help me kind of turn it around into a reverse configuration. Um, so basically that was the methodology of the naming convention on the tracks. Um, for the little white center line here, there was also kind of a method to the madness on that because this actual little white center line will be what I would trace inside of my 3D application Maya um, for the the NURBS or CV curve or, uh, you know, NURMS curve or whatever you want to call it. And I would trace that center line and um, the extra road I hear the width of it would basically show me how wide I could go out till I start kind of um, intruding on the rest of the track there. but. I'd actually more precisely measure the width and meters of this road and build it in a specific meter width. Um, for this project, most of the roads are going to be 15 or 16 meters wide. They're going to be pretty wide to accommodate uh, three or four other AI vehicles. So there is a method um, to that madness. Um, so with all of that said, that's basically how I concepted out all the track layouts today um, for this current project. And I hope um, at least some aspect of this was, was helpful to someone somewhere. Um, good night.